afternoon. Welcome to a new series that we're doing on the channel called Old Roads You've Probably Never Heard Of. For this first episode, we're going to go and explore what remains of the Old Winchester Bypass, which was called the A33. Before you say anything, yes, I know the A33 is still there, but a sizable proportion of it was removed in the mid-1990s when they built the Winchester Bypass, or rather they built the M3 to replace it. The bypass itself was built in the 1930s and actually opened in early 1940. It was one of the first dual carriageway bypasses in the country, although far from the first one, because that was the case of bypass in 1926. There have been many plans to actually build the road well before it opened because even in the 1920s Winchester was a place known for congestion. However, what essentially happened was that when the road was supposed to be replaced in the 1970s, everybody basically argued or everybody else and we had things, you know, involving Winchester College, where I went to school, arguing with the government and the cathedral arguing with the government and people dressing up as sort of native Britons, digging themselves into the ground and all that kind of thing, which became known as uh, Battle for Twyford of Down. First of all, though, let's go and have a look at uh, where the Chalmers Ford Bypass, which led straight into the Old Winchester Bypass actually begins and so we're going to go to a place called Chilworth which is on the northern edge of Southampton. It's just approaching the Chilworth roundabout now. The A27 still continues from the sort of bottom right of, of where we are over to the left hand side but we're coming all the way around and going back. If you want some idea of what the Chalmers Ford Bypass looked like when it opened in I think it was 1968 then the stretch of the M3 that we're going on which is pretty much unchanged from those days will give you an idea of it. So the A33 now, now starts here and it's most suddenly bit and goes into Southampton. If we go round here come off this exit here. Originally the road would have gone over to sort of over to, to, the, to the left if you want to go to A27 and then almost directly ahead of us if you wanted to go to Winchester before this road was built. And this was what the A33 Chalmers 4 bypass looked like pretty much all the way up. The road was converted into the M3 in the late 1980s and early 1990s, I think the widened road opened in 1991, but we're still on the original alignment here. There's not actually that much to say about it until we get to a place called Compton, which is a few miles down the road, because essentially all they did was widen this existing road in the late 80s and early 90s to make it into the M3. Ignore a lot of the kind of slip rows and things that are coming on and off, but those are, are much later, they date from the 1970s. But go down to uh, Compton now and we'll just explain the sort of changes that um, happened when they started to fiddle around with things like Twyford Down. Just crossing over a bridge that once went over what was the A31, and to the right of us, on the other side of the motorway, there is a road that runs down that side. That was the original road to Southampton before the bypass was built. And they actually, when they fiddled around with this road in the 1960s, when they built the, uh, the bypass, it was literally just straight road that went north here, 
they had an awful lot of little junctions on this left hand side with roads such as the one that's now been pushed over the top here. Bridges have been actually moved in this part of the road. You actually see the fence went up there. That was originally a slip road that went up to the side. And all along here, that was a selection of very complicated slip roads that were built in the 60s. And now we're coming to where the terrible old bypass actually started. It was pretty bad. This bridge didn't exist. The road actually went underneath. It was being carried by that bridge. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come off here, go back on ourselves to the outskirts of a place called Compton and we'll have a look for the remains of the old Winchester Bypass which you can actually still see. So let's uh, go on the old road to Compton from Winchester. First of all, we have to go round this roundabout, which comes off the motorway. Park and ride on the left, that obviously wasn't there. Come to this, uh, this roundabout here. The roundabout, when I was growing up anyway, actually only had three exits, this didn't exist at all. The road that goes up there was actually built in 1977, it's called Badger Farm Road. And it actually serves as kind of like a southern bypass of the city. And it goes to various areas which are down there. So we're just about to join the main alignment of the old road to Southampton. These beach streets are very, very old indeed very quiet today but this was the main road uh, before the bypass was built which started to come into our left round about now where you can't really see it from here that's the uh, back end of the park and ride here Just to the right hand side, off, off there, there, there is actually an old slip road which came down from the bypass onto here. Now we're on to a, a new road which actually goes up where, from the time of the, the bypass existed, so after the mid 60s anyway, when they uh, built a road underneath, it would this road would have gone underneath. I'm going to go up here now and just uh, take a look at some of the stuff that actually remains from those days. We have to go right here. But now we're actually on the alignment of all these slip roads which used to be here. As you can see there was a road here but it was sort of stopped. And we have to now go this way. So all these side turnings coming out of here would have gone on to the old, uh, the, the old bypass. Again being up here there's a real feeling of um, sort of older infrastructure here. This bridge actually is in a different place from where it was originally. Originally it was further down here. I'll show you where it was. So again we're sort of fairly along the alignment of the old bypass here, but nowadays that goes to nothing. Originally this would have come out sort of that way there was a, a bridge there but we're gonna just, just turn around down here and go back so we can have a look at the bypass from one of the existing bridges so we're now in Shawford which is the other side of the current M3 from Compton just down there is Shawford Station, which is where the final episode of One Foot in the Grave was filmed. But we go this way, 
can see that this road has been realigned. The modern road goes that way. We'll go and have a look at that in a moment, but the old road, which joined up with the bypass, went this way. And at the time, there was a house just down here called the Knoll. And the Knoll was demolished to make way for the M3 when Twyford Down was being built in the early 1990s. But yes, you can actually see that there's kind of a road to nowhere here. And the knoll was just sort of down at the end. And it had squatters in it who were attempted to get them to cancel the whole project because they were living in it. But eventually they pulled them out and uh, tore the house down and built the road, which is the other side of that fence there. Right, let's go and have a look at the road from the bridge. Here's the bridge just above the M3. That's where we were over there looking for slip roads, which came. And you can see Twyford Down in the background. The alignment of the M3 3A33, which was the, the old bypass, is roughly the same, although it goes a bit further over to the left and then goes further over to the right. These days it goes over the southwestern uh, main line, but uh, when the bypass existed, it went to an under little bridge that I can't get to today. So we need to be very careful just crossing, crossing this road. We'll go over to the other side and uh, to show you something. There we go, didn't get killed. Good. So, there's for turning into Shawford now, but back in the day, this wasn't a bridge at all. There was no bridge here. This was actually a tunnel. It was more of a straighter alignment than this. This is a, an angle to the motorway, but it was at sort of right angles to the to the, the uh, start stroke end of the old the old bypass. And actually, if you were coming from where Shawford was, you go underneath the tunnel, and you sort of end up where the start of this footpath is. And quite clearly see, once we get onto here, that this was supposed to be a slip road. These trees are on the left-hand side are quite young. And uh, when the A33 kind of went that way, the traffic that was coming off it that wanted to go down here would come down here and go down the slip road just here. You see there's plenty of room disregarding all these trees for a road to go through here and that's what it did. Right, let's now go down to the infamous Hockley Viaduct. So back over the bridge, it used to be a tunnel. There was a slip road that came from the left and the two roads just combined about where the bus stop is, just here. So this is the underneath of the Hockley Viaduct. It was built about 1890. It's actually concrete faced with brick. It became disused in the 1960s because the company that built it, the Didcot Newbury and Southampton Railway, they actually closed their line because it wasn't economical to have it anymore. And the bypass was just over there. When it was built though in the 1930s, this railway was still in operation. So we'll go up now to where the infamous Hockley traffic lights were. You can see up there is actually still a, a signal just in the distance to 
show its railway heritage, although it's a cycle trail now, it was restored actually quite recently. So we'll go now and actually have a look at where uh, the famous Hockley lights were, and it will also give us an idea of um, just what an absolute nightmare it was if you were driving all the way from London to Southampton and you suddenly came across a complicated traffic light junction in the middle of what was supposed to be a motorway. Here's that signal I was talking about earlier. Got the Didcot Newbridge Southampton Railways Hockley Viaduct on the left. Where I'm walking now and where all these cars are parked is where the old bypass actually went. The M3 is just there and you can see in the distance the Twyford Down cutting. But we'll walk along here a little bit and then I'll show you where these infamous traffic lights were. And I remember when I was younger because I, I grew up in this area in the 1980s and 1990s. I'll show you just uh, why it was such a, a problem. So this is it, this is where the junction actually was. You kind of see on here the old tarmac surface and very faintly on the ground you can just kind of see some white lines. Certainly in the, the days when I, I used to come here, I'd be taken generally by my childminder and um, we would go through the little tube after, after about 1992 or before that, just drive straight across. This enormous infrastructure has all been filled in, you can't see it anymore, but if we walk down this road, which used to be called Five Bridges Road and at the top still is, you can clearly see that this was actually the way into the south of Winchester. There are photographs of this being demolished here because heavy lorries used to come through here and when this wasn't in use anymore, in the uh, 1960s, they just got rid of the, the, the arch would have come over here. And that uh, continues down here. You can see it's quite a narrow road now. I mean, obviously it, it's, it's not used apart from the top bottom bit down there. This was, uh, um, at least the bridges were built, Five Bridges Road in 1933. So just before the bypass actually opened. Originally there were plans to build a single carriageway version of it, but those were abandoned later on in the 30s to build a dual carriageway. Quite obvious here, you can see the, the uh, markings quite easily here. And yeah, it's all, it's all gone now. I think we'll go on top of the viaduct now and we'll take a look at what's actually here as well. Going along here, you can see it's not actually wide enough for two trains to pass each other. This is because the Deadcott Newbury and Southampton Railway initially wanted to build their own line to Southampton, but they ran out of money. And so you can't really see it from here, but there's a line of trees in the background, quite a way away. And quite close to there is the um, Southwestern Railway Main Line. So I did a deal with them to connect what we'd already built up to the Southwestern Railway's tracks and then the joint line then headed down to Southampton. There is start of the bits to Twyford Down. Let's see if we can actually get better angle than that. Here's the issue of building any bypass for Winchester. The water meadows on the left here, which belong to the college, which is the college. There's St Catherine's Hill, just in the background centre there. And there's Twyford Down. You can just see there with the cutting in the middle where all the lorries are moving around. Of course, future navigation, which you can't quite see, just over there to the left.
also Junction 11 of the uh, M3 here. We're going left because we want to follow the alignment of the old bypass. Oh, it's a fire engine there. So down here, Huckley Viaduct, where we've just been, is on the left. It just starts about there. So we go down here. And we're just on the old carriageway here for a bit, which goes off to the left a little bit. The Hockley lights actually were not quite here. They were actually a little bit further down there. Right, so what we'll do now is we'll go to the other side of, uh, of Twyford Down and uh, I'm going to go and stand on a bit of the old road which is in a place called Plague Pits Valley. Yes, that's right, Plague Pits Valley. A nice little walk in the countryside. down Garnier Road. On the left is the old Morstead Road. It used to come down straight onto the bypass which would have been to the right. This actually was in the 1970s a slip road added um, to make the road a little bit safer. The junction was still absolutely horrific. I, I well remember it from when I was younger. We're actually driving straight across the old bypass now. This is where it was. But we're going to go in here to the left and have a closer look at some things. One of the things anybody who wanted to build any infrastructure to this uh, east side of the city or the southeast where we are, is we had to contend with the fact that there to the other side of the itch and navigation are the water meadows, which were owned by Winchester College and still are, I think now, I didn't want people to build on those. Here is the uh, mile post from the Didcot, Newbury and Southampton Railway. Sir Catherine's Hill is just up there and that was where the old bypass was. It's very noisy around here when I was younger and wanted to come here and just trying to get access actually to the hill which we'll see in a moment was a little bit difficult. Well, viewers, you made it to the Plague Pits Valley. Once again, there's the itch navigation. There's the water meadows. This was the railway, and the bypass was just there. It's trying to squeeze everything into a really, really small space was a bit crazy. And so, if you lived in Winchester as I did at the time, and it was a bit intimidating trying to cross this the road. Well, we'll see sort of what kind of width it was by just walking down that path there. This is actually Twyford Down here. This is the uh, western side of it. There's a very helpful map that I will actually show you um, that's just over there. You can see that there. It feels really, really quiet as if we're in the middle of nowhere at the moment, but Oh my gosh, certainly wasn't like that until 1995. Ooh, some swans. Hello. Hello, little friends. Right. Okay. This is actually really helpful because <laughs> the, um, the red line is where the old bypass was. There's uh, the start of Junction 11 of the M3. Obviously the M3 goes this way. And this is Plague Pits Valley. This, this is uh, Twyford Down here. That's the other side of Twyford Down. There's Junction 10. And um, the railway was just, well, ba basically the other side of a red line from where uh, where Twyford Down is. 
just between that and navigation, so all squeezed into here. So I walk here, you'll see that I've actually done a lot of landscaping to kind of fill in where the bypass was, but this is the level of, of it approximately here. This is where it was. And you can see St Catherine's Hill just there, it's completely cut off. And a real nightmare to get to, but yeah, I'm standing right in the middle of it. May have they have reprofiled bits there. It was a flat, it's a flat bypass, but this is it. Okay, let's go over that way uh, towards what's called Bar End, and we'll uh, take a look at a bit more railway infrastructure. So we come now to what is one of the busiest car parks in. Winchester. Fortunately, it's a weekday and it's middle of winter, so it's not difficult to get a space. But in the summer, this is it's ridiculous trying to park here. Handlebar Cafe just up here is sitting on a raised embankment from the Didcot Newbury and Southampton Railway. We'll just go underneath here. And again, where we come out, well, here was was the bypass <laughs> just here it's all been sort of filled in now and the slope is quite considerable but this is where it was it's all about 1995 let's go over there a second and take a look at something that makes it even more obvious this is actually here is where the playing fields winters of college start so water meadows just merged straight into them. This is the track bed of the railway, which goes towards where the uh, station for the Didcot Newbury at Southampton Rail was, which is still called uh, Cheese Hill, like the Chesil Station, which closed in 1961. I think they actually kept the freight traffic going a little bit later than that, though. Can't see particularly well through there, so we'll go down and take a closer look. Gosh, if I was doing this in the summer, it'd be even worse. As you can see, everything that happened in this, uh, this area needs to be approved by the college. So there is the uh, old railway infrastructure there. Before they built the M3 on its current alignment through Twyford Dam, there was actually a plan to build it through the water meadows, and that didn't really go down very well. That's why so many people argued over what was going to happen, how much it was going to cost, and all this sort of thing. They wanted to build a tunnel under Twyford Dam, but it would cost too much, they had to build a cutting. In 1992, some travellers actually um, camped on the site, it was about to be landscaped to build a motorway. When they found out what was going to happen, a lot of other people decided to join them. And uh, it turned into Battle of the Twyford Down. There were the, the famous Dongas tribe, uh, which was a group of students and environmental activists who camped right in the middle of the down to try to stop them building it. And on Yellow Wednesday in 1993, they were removed by, um, I think, Group 4 security. So we look kind of down here now. We can actually follow the route of the bypass using that path. But I'm not feeling very energetic today. So we're going to go by car. But yes, uh, Rebecca Lush, who many of you would have heard of, her first protesting, I think, was at Twyford Down. And they really, really kind of made themselves a bit of a nuisance. They dug massive burrows underneath. They chained themselves to trees. It was, it was, wow, it was crazy. <laughs> but really it needed to happen because the infrastructure with the 1930s bypass just wasn't there to actually cope with the amount of traffic. It's bad enough for traffic as it is. Imagine coming straight onto a bypass just here, literally, literally there, the other side of where that T junction is. And I remember that very well. In 1993, my mother, who uh, used to be a lecturer in geography and geology, 
actually came here with me to measure noise pollution from Winchester Bypass. And just for that two junction is we recorded traffic going past at sort of like 104 decibels. Was, the house was actually not there at the time. That's a newer house, but there was a group of cottages just there and people were living there. It's absolutely amazing. Right, let's go up to the next bit and we can see a bridge to nowhere. Well, viewers, this is St Catherine's Park and Ride. And actually this is the alignment of the old bypass. You can actually see a bridge that was put in there in the 1970s used to carry the, junk, the traffic over it. It's just there. So I'm standing on the alignment of the bypass here. I'll actually see if we go this way. This was the old road into the city from Morstead, which uh, comes down there. And uh, we might just go up on the bridge as well and just kind of take a look as well. When you walk on this road, see how obvious it was that this used to just come straight through here and again the cottages that are here must have been really really noisy I mean look at things to hear cat's eyes and all kinds of things which would definitely give away that there's something going on here well before this area was built in the 2000s now there was some controversy over the park and ride at the time because they had promised that we're going to cover over all the traces of the old A33. But uh, while well, they built a park and ride over some of it, so they had to actually um, reclaim some more of the land as sort of compensation for it. Right, let's, uh, let's go. So this is a leftover from the days of the old bypass. This was the uh, junction with that road that goes into the centre of Winchester which becomes Chesil Street. So up we go. This was one of the slip roads and we just driving over the old the old bypass now. This isn't actually a road anymore. Over to the left it's just fields. Over to the right hand side there's the car park that we were in but we're about actually to get back onto the old bypass and some of the only bits of it that actually still exist and that you can drive on. So we go underneath the motorway, this is M3 Junction 10 and Morstead Road just is over there to the right. You can see from that sign just there it's all been realigned. We're about to come on to the old Winchester Bypass. This roundabout, which is uh, called uh, the Chilcombe Interchange, I think is this pair of roundabouts, is not that well regarded by people who are into sort of, you know, old roads and things like that. So we just go down here. So this is the old 1940 Bypass. And I could blast past that Vauxhall Corsa, but I'm not going to. You see, we've actually got a hedge in the middle of it here. We are on the old alignment of the road. The motorway is just over to our left. I'd love to stay behind this, uh, this Corsa, we're afraid of the earth. The bridge which is coming up ahead is a, a footbridge, because that's the only way to get into the village of. Uh, Chilcombe safely. The other ways are uh, just uh, really by car. This roundabout actually did um, used to exist in the 1980s. It was put in to allow access to the A31 and A272 that go off now to the right, like that course is doing. And so we are actually now still on the alignment of the old bypass. There's a couple of bridges and a cutting just ahead of me here, we go up a road called Spitfire Link. This road used to be much, much narrower. 
this is the original um, southbound carriageway of the bypass. The bridge was put in in 1933, and that was much narrower. I think that it's called Spitfire Leg because Spitfire Bridge, because in the war, someone actually flew a plane underneath it. I can't remember if it was a Spitfire or not, but someone flew a plane underneath it. So we're still on the original line, but A3, the M3 is over to the left. Gradually, the M3, the A33 were combined at that point, but the section here, kind of north of there, was actually uh, opened in 1985. So we're coming down to Winnell Roundabout now, this can get very, very congested at times. We're going to go over the roundabout. There was a road called Eastern Lane that comes from the right-hand side here, but that um, junction was closed off when this was built some time ago. Right, we'll just negotiate this massive roundabout and we'll get back to you when I'm on the other side. So I'm about to join what is now the A34 as well, but this road is actually um, combining the two, the two roads. So a bit of the A34 here, which is where it actually begins. So we're on the alignment again of the old bypass, which we probably happens in a second when we see a sort of hedge that goes down in the middle of it. It does divert though to the left for a little bit because in 1969 they opened a linked road to the A34, which was called the A34 at the time, which is this side here. The original Winchester bypass went off to the right hand side there. You can see it's well, right over, maybe you can't, we'll have to come back maybe this way, but this is uh, part of the link road that went to the A34, which uh, used the track bed of the Didcot Newbury and Southampton Railway. Kingsworthy Station was kind of just a little bit further up on the left hand side of the road that goes off here. We're going to the right, so we're going to follow the line of the bypass, although this was added um, in the late 60s. So we'll come back the other way. So going under the bridge now, it's from the A34 link probe was built. And although it's only one lane in either direction, you can see it's clearly wide enough for two. It's just that they've, they've decided that um, you don't need to have two lanes of traffic coming down here. But we're on the, the alignment to the original bypass here. You can see it's actually quite windy. The road over to the left goes into Kingsworthy, and that was the main road from the, uh, the north. But Basingstoke went into went into the uh, into the city, and this is the end. This is the end of the old Winchester bypass just here at this uh, staggered crossroads. So we'll just go up here in a second, and we'll turn round, and then we will actually uh, just see what it looks like on the other side. Here we are, viewers. We've just come to the start of the bypass from the north. Don't know what's going on here. I'll just go past it. We can find ourselves a little lane. There we go. So, this is uh, what a bypass looked like for most of its length. And they've actually done a lot of work here recently. I don't know what they've been doing along here. There have been cones along here for quite a lot of it. So we'll just go along here. Originally this was this was four lanes. They've narrowed it now to put in that extra bit where we came along earlier. You can see that this bridge here was clearly designed to carry a 1940s style dual carriageway. And that's just been actually tidied up a bit. Right, I think that's all the infrastructure that we have to uh, have to show. So thank you for watching this incredibly long and rambling first episode of Old Roads which you've probably never heard of. I don't know whether you found this interesting or not. It, it's taken a while to put all the bits together but uh, I hope that some of you found it interesting anyway. Um, I did put some um, maps in here as well to see you can kind of 
compare the uh, two the two different um, alignments of where things are and maps. So thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for um, probably less long and rambling content. Like this video and leave a comment below. Thank you ever so much indeed once again.